Here's another problem that I'm going to use Riemann sums and take a limit to get the value of the integral. This is a function we were doing a little bit of estimating with before. Function is f of x equals negative x squared over 4 plus 36. And the interval that it was defined, on, or at least the inter interval we were interested in, was the closed interval from 1 to 11. So here's a picture of the, the graph. I've stretched it out a little bit so it's easier, easy to see. So you put a marking here at 1. That's x sub 0. And 11 will mark x sub n. <clears throat> now I'm going to get um, use the limits of a Riemann sum to get the integral from 1 to 11, negative x squared over 4 plus 36 dx. And I'll start with right hand limits. I'm going to do right, left, and midpoints. So we'll start with right hand endpoints. If you'll remember then, we will have at each of our places, we will draw a vertical line from the right end and then go over. So if I, if I laid down a bunch of uh, marks in here, a partition as it were, don't take these numbers for to be anything other than just marks. I wish I hadn't I even put numbers on there, but nonetheless, you remember then you go to the right and you draw another rectangle till you get to the graph, and then you go over, etc., etc. And I, I don't really care. You know, here would be the first one, something like this. And then that, the height. of that first rectangle is, is on the right hand side so you'd want the height of f of 1 and the thickness would be delta x. What is delta x by the way? Delta x, let's start with that, delta x equals the end of the interval is 11 minus the beginning divided by n. Remember I want to have n equal subintervals for this to work out well. Don't even bother trying to vary the size of your uh, subintervals in the partition. It'll, it'll just cause much grief. All right, so what we typically did then is I went somewhere around here, maybe to the middle. I, I really didn't care where. And I drew myself some sort of a, a rectangle. Maybe make that a little bit better. We would have had I minus 1. That would be x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. The height is f of x sub i. So we have the integral i equals 1 to n f of x sub i times delta x. That equals summation i equals 1 to n. Now what are the f of x sub i here? Here, the first one, x sub 1, since the start is n equals 1, well, x1 will be our first one, and then you'll have x2. What are they? Well, it, this the first one is 1 plus delta x, and the second one is 1 plus 2 times delta x, 1 plus 3 times delta x, and if you want x sub i, equals 1 plus delta x times i. So let me put those in there. f of 1 plus delta x times i times delta x. I'll go ahead and put in my delta x's now. This equals the sum i equals 1 to n. f of 1 plus delta was 10 over n. 
times i then times 10 over n. Now let's go ahead and plug these into the function itself. Remember, I'll remind you the function f of x is negative x squared over 4 plus 36. So I'm going to take this stuff, this is my x that I'll be using in that spot. So I have negative 1 fourth. I find it easier to put the 1 fourth in front of this. 1 plus 10 over n times i squared plus 36 times 10 over n. And now like anything else you would do, I would, you know, be honest with you, I think that I would prefer to factor out a negative one-fourth here, but I'm not going to do it because I don't think a student would generally do that, so I'm not going to do it. I, I would, though. What I am going to do instead is I'm going to do like most students would do and foil out this squared term. At least I hope they do that. So I have negative one-fourth times one plus, well, so when you foil it out, you, the outers will be one. Uh, the I and O part of it will be 2 times this. So that'll be 20 over N times I. And then the last piece will be 100 over N squared times I squared. Plus 36. and then times 10 over n. Let's see how bad it turns out. I, I, I may, when I put the 1 4 through, I guess it doesn't do, it does some nice things on these ones, so, uh, but not so much on the very first term. i equals 1 to n, so I'll have negative 1 fourth, then I'll have negative 5 over n times i, minus 5 over n times i, uh, minus 25 over n squared times i squared plus 36 times 10 over n. Uh, let me combine what I can, and the only things that I combine is the 36 and the minus 1 fourth. 36 is 144 over 4, so this will turn out to be summation i equals 1 to n 143 over 4 minus 5 over n times i minus 25 over n squared times i squared times 10 over n i'll go ahead and multiply the 10 over n through so i have the sum i equals 1 to n 143 over 4 times n you know I probably shouldn't I'll take another step I really don't care it's not that big of a deal <clears throat> minus 50 over n times I and then minus 250 over n squared but I just realized I, this should be an n squared because I do have an over n here. So this should be an n cubed down here times i squared. And now I'll do a little simplifying where I can. And there's really only one spot. It's I can make this into a 2. I can make this into a 5. And then when I take 5 times uh, 143, I'll get 5 times 100 will be 500. 5 times 40 will be 200, so I have 715. So the sum, i equals 1 to n, 715 over 2 n, yeah, let's keep it like that, then uh, minus summation, i equals 1 to n, 50 over n squared times i, minus summation i equals 1 to n, 
250 over n cubed times i squared. Now what I'll do is I will factor out all of the coefficients that I can. So for instance, the first sum will be i equals 1 to n. I didn't do exactly what I told you I was going to do. I'll take the 715 divided by 2n out front of it, leaving in there a 1. We have a formula for that. Next, I'm going to take this 50 over n squared out. And that gives me i equals 1 to n of i. And then minus 250 over n cubed times summation i equals 1 to n i squared. And now I will make use of the formulas for each of these. Each of these, the formula will be obvious what it is once I throw it in underneath of it. So I have 715 over 2n. This first sum is just n. You're adding 1 to itself n times. 4 this one here, remember that's n times n plus 1 over 2. And because we haven't had a quadratic, I haven't had to do an i squared formula yet, but now I will. This is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And now let's do some simplifying where I can. I'll take an n out of here, leaving just the 715 over 2. I'll take an n from here. I can take 2 goes into 50 25 times. And then I can make this n cubed into an n squared by taking out an n. I can take a 2 out of there, turn that 6 into a 3, and the 250 into a 125. And 3 does not go into 125. Now remember, one of the coolest tricks, especially for taking limits, is what I'm going to do with these numbers. I have a 25 left here, minus 25. But I'm going to rewrite this as n plus 1 over n. Minus, and the same kind of a thing I'll do over there, 125 over 3. Now, I'm, I have n squared, so I have an n times an n. So I'm going to take 1n and put it under the n plus 1. And then I'm going to put a, the other n under the 2n plus 1. This way, when I do the limits, everything will be evident. 715 over 2 minus 25. Remember, this becomes, when you break this up into n over n plus 1 over n, 1 plus 1 over n. That way, when I take the limit, this whole piece will just go to 1. Minus 125 over 3, and I'll do exactly the same kind of thing here. I'll do a 1 plus 1 over n, and I'll do the same kind of a thing here. This time, I'll get a 2 plus 1 over n. So when you take the limit as n goes to infinity, this piece will be 2. So now we're ready. My integral from 1 to 11 of negative x squared over 4 plus 36 dx equals the limit as n goes to infinity of exactly this last expression. 715 over 2 minus 25 times 1 plus 1 over n minus 125 over 3 times 1 plus 1 over n times 2 plus 1 over n. But once I take the limit, the limit has no effect on this constant term, which is 715 over 2 minus 25, as I mentioned. The 1 over n will become 0. You'll get 1 plus 0. And then I have negative 125 over 3. This piece right here will become 1 plus 0. And the other piece will become 2 plus 0. So I end up with 715 over 2 minus 25 minus 250 over 3. And so a common denominator would be 6. Let's see what that is then. So if I want to get a 6 out of this guy, I've got to multiply this whole thing by 3. 
So I'll get 21, 45, multiply this by 6, you get negative 150, multiply this by 2, you get 500, all over 6, this equals 1495 over 6. Redo the last example. with left hand endpoints. So I still think it's a good idea to draw a picture every single time. I just don't trust myself to remember. One thing you should note that no matter what you do, when it comes to your partition, this is always x0 and this is always xn. Remember this is going from 1 to 11. So now this time it's a little bit different. You know, if you partition your interval up into slices, um, the first one will have a height that's f of x is 0. Be a little bit bigger up there. And of course the thickness will always be delta x. And then of course this one you draw your, you now start on the left edge and you draw, you complete the rectangle by drawing to the right and then going down. So I'll do the same kind of a thing. Let me get, say, uh, an x sub i minus 1 and an x sub i. If I go to the x sub i minus 1, I think I liked it better by doing x sub i and then doing i goes from 0 to n minus 1. I think that's a better deal. So we'll let this one go up, then over, and then down. So that'll be for xi to xi plus 1. Uh, the height of this rectangle then is f of xi. And I, let's see how that works. So uh, this particular rectangle that I drew from xi to xi plus 1 would be uh, the area of that rectangle is f of x sub i times delta x. Of course, I, if you don't remember, delta x equals 11 minus 1 over 10 with, over n, not 10, n, which equals 10 over n. So then with these, remember I suggested it was easier to start i equals 0. That way you're starting at f of x 0, which is the first one you want to do, and you're going to go to n minus 1. You'll still do the limit as n goes to infinity, but let's go ahead then. What are these numbers equal to? Well, once again, you're going to start at x 0, so um, and then the next one will be x 1, x 2. Actually, you'll go to x, when you get to the end here, you will get to x sub n minus 1, and that will be the last one that you draw your rectangle for, will be that one. So this makes perfect sense. These then are very easy to do as far as uh, get their location. i equals 0 to n minus 1, uh, f, and basically it's What's the initial one? x0, 1, plus delta x times i, delta x. Let me just make sure of that number there. When i is 0, one last time. When I, I is 0, I'm doing f of 1, which is right, because that's what x sub 0 is. Then when i is 1, I'll be doing f of 1 plus delta. Uh, 1 plus delta will be this guy right here, then 1 plus 2 delta, 1 plus 3 delta, up to n minus 1. Good. All right, let's go ahead and put in our the numbers that we know. i equals 1 to n, f of 1 plus 10 over n times i times 10 over n. And I'll go ahead and plug that into the function. Recall the function is f of x equals negative x squared over 4 plus 36. So thinking I'll need more space, I'll move this thing over a little bit. 
I'll have negative 1 plus 10 over n times i squared over 4. And I think I'll do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to put, let me take this thing out of here. And I'll put my negative 1 fourth in front of it. I just like it there better. 1 plus 10 over n times i squared plus 36 times 10 over n. And as before, I'm going to FOIL this stuff out. And much of the same stuff, I'm going to multiply the negative one-fourth through. And as before, 36 plus the 1 fourth will be 143 over 4. I'll multiply the 10 through, and I'll simplify it as I'm going as, as well since all of these computations are completely familiar from the last time. The numbers are all coming out the same. So I'll have 715 over 2n for the first one. Then I'll have negative 50 over n times i for the second piece. Then negative 250 over n squared times i squared. n squared, and I'm doing funny I should make the same mistake from time to time, but there it goes. I get a cube there. Now we'll go ahead and break it up into sums, and I'm not going to explain everything I do this time. So I have 7, 1, 5 over 2n times the sum i equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 minus 50 over n squared times the summation i equals 0 to n minus 1 of i minus 250 over n cubed summation i equals 0 to n minus 1 i squared. Now be careful with this first one. It's counting up the number 1, but it's not doing it just n minus 1 times. You've got to count 0 also. So for 0, it has a 1. For 1, it has a 1. For 2, for i equals 2, it has a 1. For i equals 3, it has a 1. All the way to n minus 1. So there's technically n 1s. So the first piece turns out to be 715 over 2n times n. However, the next ones, the 0 term for this and this one, is not going to have any value. It won't be there, essentially. So I really will have n minus 1 non-zero terms here. So when I put in the formula, you know how you put this number and then that number times 1? Well, this number this time is n minus 1. And then you do n minus 1 plus 1 over 2. Similarly, I have negative 250 over n cubed. Same deal. It only goes up to n minus 1. So my formula is... Uh, not n first, it's at minus 1, and then n, not n plus 1, and then finally 2 times n minus 1 plus 1. And all of that is over 6. So let me simplify where I can. I can simplify an n in the first term. In the second term, I can take out the 2 with the 50, 
and then I can cancel an n with n squared. And then and the third term, I have an n that I can cancel, make that into an n squared. Cancel that 6, make it into a 3, and that 250 into a 125. So I have 715 over 2. This part right here, remember the little trick that I use. I'm going to take this n and put it under n minus 1. So the second piece becomes 25 times 1 minus 1 over n. And I'll do the same kind of a game on the last piece. I have 125 over 3. If I sneak an n under n minus 1, that'll give me the 1 minus 1 over n. And this piece right here, if you simplify before I actually do the divisioning part, the dividing by 3, this is going to be 2n minus 1. So this last piece would be 2 minus 1 over n. And the integral then, from 1 to 11, negative x squared over 4 plus 36 dx will be the limit as n goes to infinity of this stuff. I'm going to write it a little tighter so it'll fit 715 over 2 minus 25 times 1 minus 1 over n minus 125 over 3 times 1 minus 1 over n times 2 minus 1 over n. And then any of these terms, like the limit doesn't do anything to the 715 over 2. Uh, this here will become negative 25 because 1 minus 0 will just be 1. And then here I'll end up getting negative 250 over 3 because this will become 1 and this part will become 2. And these numbers do look familiar. Let me go to the last problem and see if they're the same thing. We had in the last problem 715 over 2 minus 25 minus 250 over 3 led to 1495 over 6. And that's two down, one more to go. Last up, midpoint. So redo the last example. Using midpoints. Uh, for these, I like to stretch this thing out as much as possible. Once again, the number 1 is still x0, and 11 is still xn. And then, let's say this were x1. Just ignore the numbers, they don't mean anything here. Remember, what we're going to do is find the midpoint of it, and then go up to the, from the midpoint, go up to the y-axis, and put a dot here, and then draw a horizontal line, so that you create a rectangle of that height. What was that midpoint? The x value of that midpoint always was x0 plus x1 divided by 2. It was the mean of those two. So if we're looking at a rectangle out here somewhere, let's just say, and take this plus 1 here. That way the first rectangle agrees with the right-hand endpoint. The second rectangle agrees with the right-hand endpoint, blah, blah, blah. So summation. That means that let's take a look and see what we have then. This will change this then. You'll have f of x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i over 2. That'll be the height. i equals what? All right, so then if i goes from 1, when i equals 1, and remember, these can start at 0 or, or 1, depending on what's more convenient for you. And we have f 
of x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i over 2 times delta x. So this is rectangle number i that has this. Well, I need to get locations for these. Well, what does xi minus 1 look like? And then what does xi look like? Well, the xi's go like this. You start at x0, and then you go to x1, which is delta away. So this is 1 plus delta. And then one more notch is 1 plus 2 delta. Then 1 plus 3 delta. So summation i equals 1 to n f of 1 half times x sub i minus 1 plus 1 half times x sub i times delta x. We'll fill these in as soon as I feel comfortable with whatever I'm doing here. What does x sub i minus 1 look like? Well, if i is 1, then we need to be at x0. So that can be summation i equals 1 to n. By the way, let me go ahead and do it then. x1, x1 equals 1 plus delta x times 1. Uh, x2 equals 1 plus delta x times i times 2. x3 equals 1 plus delta x times 3. I mean, you get the idea. So this right here, I'll have 1 half times 1 plus delta x times i minus 1, since it's an i minus 1, plus 1 half, 1 plus delta x times i, and that's f of all of that stuff, times 10 over n. That's the delta x. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to do a lot of simplifying in here. I'll give myself more space in case it is needed. So I'm going to have a 1 half times 1 plus 10 over n times i minus 1 plus 1 half times 1 plus 10 over n times i times 10 over n. So I'm going to have, I guess I'll multiply this stuff out inside of here first. 1, well, f of all this, f of 1 half times 1 plus 10 over n i minus 10 over n plus 1 half times 1 plus 10 over n i times 10 over n. Now I'm going to multiply the 1 half through i equals 1 to n f of 1 half plus 5 over n times i minus 5 over n plus 1 half plus 5 over n times i times 10 over n. Now this is nice because the 1 halves add, add together to give you 1, so I have the summation i equals 1 to n of f of 1, and then I have minus 5 over n. Let me mark them off as I use them. And then I have plus 10 over n i. And all of that is times 10 over n. Let me throw these things into the formula, reminding you once again, f of x equals negative x squared over 4 plus 36.
So this equals the summation i equals 1 to n, negative 1 fourth. I choose to do it the same way I did in the previous ones, 1 minus 5 over n plus 10 over n times i squared plus 36, and that is times 10 over n. I will FOIL this out as before, negative one-fourth. I'm not going to write it all out in, in, in detail. You can do that on your own, but you're basically going to have each of these times each of the things again. So for instance, you'll start with one times one, and then you'll have one times negative five over n, and then you'll have one times 10 over n times i. Then you're going to have to do uh, negative 5 over n times each of these. So you'll have negative 5 over n times 1 will give you a negative 5 over n. Negative 5 over n times itself is plus 25 over n squared. Uh, and then negative 5 over n times 10 over n i will be negative 50 over n squared times i. times i squared. And then the last one, 10 over n i and then negative 50 over n squared times i And then um, times itself, uh, 100 over n squared times i squared. I've kind of run out of room here. I, 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 I staggered these because I wanted to make it a little bit easier for me to add them all up. So I have to sneak over here and put plus 36. And then I'll have to figure out a way to end this. I guess I'll make it that big. 10 over n. Make this one bigger then to match the, pre the, the one in the previous. Okay, so I end up with the sum i equals 1 to n of negative 1 fourth. Let's see what these added up to. I only had 1 1, so that's nice. I had 1. Then I had minus 10 over n. Are there any ones that just have n? Let me throw this one in here. Plus 25 over n squared. Okay. That way I've taken care of this, 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 this. Now I'm going to combine the i's here. Here's going to be 20 over n times i. Okay, so I took care of those two. Then I have negative 100 over n squared times i, and then I have plus 100 over n squared times i squared, plus 36 times 10 over n. I really have no good, I mean, this 25 and that I don't really like so much, but let me go ahead and multiply the negative one fourth through. So I'll have negative one fourth minus five over two n uh, minus twenty five over four n squared uh, plus no minus. Everything's going to be minus except oh no, not everything. I'll have minus 5 over n i, and I'll have minus 25 over n squared i, um, and then we have minus 
That one should be a plus. This one should be a minus. Minus 25 over n squared times i squared. Then plus 36 times 10 over n. So uh, we have negative 1 fourth plus 36. That we've seen this before. 143 over 4. Okay, then I have minus 5 over 2n, minus 25 over 4n squared, minus 5 over n times i, plus 25 over n squared times i squared. No, is that, no, that's times just i. Um, minus 25 over n squared times i squared. And the 10 over n is at the end. I'll go ahead and multiply it through now. So like before, I'm going to get the sum i equals 1 to n. This first piece will be 7, 1, 5 over 2n. This here will be uh, negative 50 over 2n squared, so negative 25 over n squared. And then here, I'll get negative 250 over 4n cubed. Negative 125 over 2n cubed. And then minus 50 over n squared times i. And then we have plus 250 over n squared, n cubed, times i. And then finally, minus 250 over n squared times i squared. All right, let's break these all up. I am not going to break this into sums. I'm simply going to put below here what its sum would be after I add after I factor this out and then add up what remains. So if you factor that part out, what would remain would be a 1. And you would end up with 7, 1, 5 over 2n times n. This also does not have an, an i in it, so you get the same thing as you do with any other number. 25 over n squared times n. Same thing with this one. Negative 125 over n cubed times n. Now here, this has an i attached to it, so I'll get the 50 over n squared, but remember what the formula is for i. That is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then the same thing goes with this one. Plus 250 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then finally, the last one is negative 250 over n square n. I think I made a mistake here. Right here, that should be a cubed. And the formula for i squared was n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. That goes off the page. I will simplify where I can, like here and here, here and here, here and here, um, here and here, here and here. Two, 2 goes into 250, 125 times. I've got an n that I can take out here and make that a square still. And then here I can take out and make this an n squared and make this into a 3 and this into a 125. Now this will equal 715 over 2 minus 25 over n minus 125 over n squared. 
So if you remember the fancy way I, I have of rewriting this, I'll have minus 25 times 1 plus 1 over n. Then I'll have plus uh, 125. But here I have n squared, so I have uh, n plus 1 over n squared. So that's a little bit different. I didn't just have an n there. And here I'll sneak the other two, the n squared, underneath of these two. So I'll have minus 125 over 3 times 1 plus 1 over n times 2 plus 1 over n. Okay, now take n going to infinity. What are we going to have then? So the integral from 1 to 11 negative x squared over 4 plus 36 dx. Well, if n goes to infinity, that doesn't affect the 7, 1, 15 over 2. 7, 1, 5 over 2. This 25 over n and this 125 over n squared both go to 0. Put that in a more reasonable location here. This and this go to 0. This part right here goes to negative 25. Uh, this part right here, since the denominator has a higher power than the numerator, this piece right here goes to 0. And then this one we've seen before, this one goes to negative 250 over 3. And if you look, these numbers seem awful familiar. Let me take a look and go back to the problem before it. 7, 15 over 2, minus 25, minus 250 over 3. And I think that means this turns out to be 14, 95 over 6. So here you have three seemingly different methods. They all yield the same answer, like I said they would. Um, what I'll do next time is I think I'll grab one of my old exams, which usually has quadratic um, functions to do this kind of stuff on, and you'll know exactly what's expected of you then when you go to take an exam like that.